Good morning guys. Today we're going to look at the inverse of a 2x2 two two matrix, talk a little bit about the inverse of a 3x3, three three. Um, but we'll focus mostly, mostly on the calculation portion of the inverse of a 2x2. Two two. Um, what is an inverse? Well the product of a matrix and its inverse is the identity matrix of the same size. Um, so if I have a 2x2 two two matrix times its inverse, which is also 2x2, two two, we'll get the 2x2 two two identity. So that's what this uh, is saying. An inverse matrix is like a multiplicative inverse for regular numbers. Uh, 2 times 1 half is 1 because 1 half is the, or, yeah, is the multiplicative inverse of 2. That's what an inverse does. The product of a number and its inverse gives you the identity for talking multiplicative. Uh, the additive inverse, you know, uh, 3 plus negative 3 is 0. So an inverse is anything that you combine using the appropriate operation to result in the appropriate identity. Multiplicative inverses give you one or the identity matrix if we're talking about matrices. Additive inverses in numbers give you zero or the zero matrix if you're talking about matrices. So that's what an, an inverse is. A couple of notes, only square matrices have inverses uh, and that comes back to how we actually calculate a matrix or calculate an inverse matrix. And only matrices with determinants not equal to zero have an inverse. So since we know only square matrices have a determinant, if the determinant has to be not zero, then obviously it can only work for square matrices. So let's just look at how we know something's an inverse. When the product of two matrices are the identity, then those matrices are inverses of each other. So let's go through and just check to see that these two matrices are inverses of, her, of each other. A couple of notation things. If this was matrix A, we're checking to see that this is matrix A inverse, that negative one exponent. Remember, negative one exponent on a number means uh, reciprocal, so the multiplicative inverse. Same symbol right there, that's our inverse notation. It doesn't do anything, it just tells us we're working with the inverse. So let's go through and let's multiply. Rows by columns. So a quick review. 11 fifteenths times 1, 2 times 1 third, it's 2 thirds, nope, let's try that again. 11 fifteenths times 1, 1 third times 0, negative 4 fifteenths times negative 1. Uh, going to column 2, so 11 fifteenths times 2, 1 third times negative 2, negative four fifteenths times three. Uh, going through column three, negative 33 fifteenths. We have five thirds and we have eight fifteenths. Okay. Uh, let's look at row two. One third times one is one third. One third times zero is zero. One third times negative one is negative one third. Uh, going to column two, uh, one third and two is two thirds. One third and negative two is negative two thirds. And one third and three is one. Uh, for column three, one third and negative three is negative one. One third and five is five thirds. And one third and negative two is negative two thirds. For row three, two fifteenths and one is two fifteenths. One third and zero is zero. Two fifteenths and negative one is negative two fifteenths. Uh, for column two, two fifteenths and two is four fifteenths. Write that a little more neatly. Uh, one third and negative two is negative two thirds. Two fifteenths and three is six fifteenths. I have for column three, two fifteenths and negative three is negative six fifteenths. One third and five is five thirds. Two fifteenths and negative two is negative four fifteenths. So going through, that's our product of the two. Let's check and see if we get the identity matrix. Uh, Eleven fifteenths and four fifteenths is fifteen fifteenths, which is one. Twenty-two fifteenths and twelve fifteenths 
22 fifteenths and 12 fifteenths should be 34 fifteenths, which is not giving us what we're supposed to. So what did we mess up on? 22, negative 2 thirds, negative 12 fifteenths. Why didn't somebody say something? So let's try this again. 22 fifteenths minus 12 fifteenths is going to give us 10 fifteenths. 10 fifteenths minus 2 thirds, which is 10 fifteenths, is 0. Uh, for the next part, 33 fifteenths, so 5 thirds is 25 fifteenths plus 8 fifteenths is 33, so negative 33 plus 33 fifteenths is 0 fifteenths. Uh, 1 third minus 1 third is 0. 2 thirds minus 2 thirds is 0, plus 1 is 1. Over here, negative 1 and negative 2 thirds is negative 5 thirds. Negative 5 thirds plus 5 thirds is 0. 2 fifteenths minus 2 fifteenths is 0. 4 fifteenths and 6 fifteenths is 10 fifteenths. 10 fifteenths minus 2 thirds. 2 thirds is 10 fifteenths. So that's zero. Uh, negative six fifteenths and negative four fifteenths is negative ten fifteenths. Uh, so negative ten fifteenths, which is two thirds. So negative two thirds plus five thirds is three thirds, which is one. So as we can see, the product of these two three by three matrices gave us the identity matrix. Remember, main diagonal of one, this left hand diagonal of one, every other position is held by zero. Since that's our 3 by 3 identity matrix, then these two all of them have to be inverses of each other. So that's what an inverse does. The product of inverses cancel each other out more or less and leave us the corresponding identity matrix. Uh, so let's look at how we actually calculate um, the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. All right, so here you have it. Here's how you find the inverse of any matrix. Find the inverse of any matrix, you do 1 over the determinant of that matrix, which we looked at in the last lecture. Uh, you would use expansion by minors or diagonal method, depending on what size the matrix is, times what we call the adjoint matrix. Now, the tricky part is coming up with that adjoint matrix. For a 2 by 2, it's very easy to make that adjoint matrix. Um, for larger matrices, the process is always the same. It's actually the process we use to get the adjoint in the 2x2, two two, but because they have so many values, it gets really hairy, really nasty. Um, so it, it's, it's difficult. We won't ask you to find those by hand for anything larger than a 2x2. Two two. Uh, we will explore finding the inverse of larger matrices, finding the adjoint uh, matrix for a larger matrix in class one day, um, but you won't be asked to actually calculate that um, by hand anytime soon. So... Um, that's, in general, how you find the inverse of any matrix. Same process holds for inverse of a 2 by 2. 1 over the determinant times the adjoint. It's just this adjoint is easy to remember. Uh, all you do to get the adjoint matrix in a 2 by 2, swap these positions. So your main diagonal, swap positions. So that left-handed diagonal that we did for uh, determinant, they're just going to swap positions. And your other diagonal, they go opposites. So they stay in the same place, same values, just become opposite of what they were. So they're negative, they go to positive, positive, go to negative. So swap your left-handed diagonal, change the sign on your right-handed diagonal. Let's we'll look at this example right over here. Uh, find the inverse of this matrix. So we're going to start by identifying the determinant. So we want the determinant of matrix A. We know we do that by 2 times 3, which is 6 minus... 4 times 1, which is 4. So the determinant is 2. Now we're going to set up our inverse. So A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant, which is 2. Uh, we'll write it down here. We've got a little more room. A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant times the adjoint matrix which in this case we are going to swap those two values, 3 and 2, 
change the signs on those two values. So negative 4, negative 1. From there, it's just multiplying a matrix by a scalar. We know we just distribute that scalar to every entry within the matrix. So we get half of 3, which is 3 halves. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Half of negative 1 is negative a half. And half of 2 is 1. That is the inverse of this matrix right here. We can always check by multiplying them back together, see if it puts us back at the identity. Uh, so we did just quick check. Let's do, what is this over here, red? 2 times 3 halves is 3. Uh, negative 4 and negative a half is 2. My, sorry, my negative shouldn't be there anymore because it's the original matrix. So 4 and negative half is negative 2. 2 and negative 2 is negative 2. 4 and, sorry, is negative 4. 4 and 1 is 4. Okay. Um, 1 and 3 halves is 3 halves. 3 and negative a half is negative 3 halves. 1 and negative 2 is negative 2. 3 and 1 is 3. So you can see we get 3 minus 2, which is 1. Negative 4 and 4 cancel. Neg uh, 3 halves minus 3 halves is 0. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So since the product of our original and our inverse are the identity, then that is the accurate inverse of this matrix. So, and when you do your multiplication, the order doesn't matter which one because they are inverses of each other. I could have done this one times this one, and we would still get that identity matrix. Right, let me put one more up here for you guys to try. Let's say we have matrix B, and it is equal to 4, 2, 6, 2. Uh, pause the video, take a couple minutes to uh, find the inverse of that matrix, and I will wait right here for you. So you should have found the inverse of this matrix. Let's go through and check your work. Uh, we start by identifying the determinant of the matrix. So let's do the determinant of matrix B, which is 4 times 2 minus 2 times 6. So 8 minus 12 which is equal to negative 4. There's our determinant. Now if we want the inverse of B, we do 1 over the determinant times our adjoint matrix. We get the adjoint matrix by swapping those two, that left-handed diagonal, changing the signs on the right-handed diagonal, and then we distribute our scalar. Negative 1 fourth of 2 is negative a half. Negative one fourth of negative two is positive a half. Uh, negative one fourth of negative six is three halves. And negative one fourth of four is negative one. Uh, go through, you can check, multiply this matrix times that matrix. You'll see that they are inverses of each other. And that's it. Now, earlier we made comment that if a, if a matrix has a determinant that's equal to zero, it does not have an inverse. Well, it comes back to right here. Whenever you find an inverse, or to find an inverse, you do one over the determinant times this adjoint matrix. Well, if the determinant is zero, one over the determinant is undefined. So since one over the determinant is undefined, if the, sorry, one over the determinant is undefined, then we say that the inverse of this matrix is undefined. We cannot find the inverse of a matrix if we don't have an actual number for the determinant to be able to multiply by the adjoint matrix. So as you're going through and finding inverses, occasionally you'll come across a determinant that's equal to zero. In that case, we don't have an inverse for that specific type of matrix. There's nothing, there is no matrix that we can multiply that original matrix by that would give us the identity matrix because they do have a determinant of zero. Uh, when we get into solving um, certain things using inverse matrices and other types of matrix manipulations, uh, 
we'll see what that determinant of zero and that no inverse implies. Uh, it is very important. It just lets us know what type of group or what type of things we're working with. Uh, but it does come up sometimes, so don't be thrown off. It is possible. All we simply say is if the determinant is zero, then the inverse is not defined or undefined. Uh, that's it for inverses of a 2x2, two two, a little bit of a talk about inverses of a 3x3 three three and larger. Uh, again, the 3x3 three three will go, uh, we'll get to explore that in class um, one day, um, coming up very shortly. But that's it, um, and I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.